Welcome to another edition of A New Me. We're here to help you learn about the latest medical advances and procedures from the Washington, D.C. area's leading doctors and professionals. Our guest experts provide you with the real information necessary to help you eliminate making the wrong medical and cosmetic enhancement decisions. Get ready for your consultation. When we come back, we'll be on location at New View Laser Eye in Reston, Virginia, discussing near vision conductive keratoplasty, or CK, with one of the area's leading ophthalmologists, Dr. Jacqueline Griffiths. Dr. Griffiths participated in the CRS USA LASIK trials to get the LASIK procedure approved by the FDA and is recognized as one of the Washington, D.C. area's leading ophthalmologists by Washingtonian Magazine. Welcome back to A New Me. We are on location here at New View Laser Eye in Reston, Virginia with one of this area's leading ophthalmologists, Dr. Jacqueline Griffiths. Welcome, Dr. Griffiths. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure having you with us today. Can you please begin by telling us what near vision conductive keratoplasty, also referred to as CK, is? Well, CK is the first FDA non-laser procedure approved to correct presbyopia. And what's presbyopia? Presbyopia is an aging change. It takes place after the age of 40, whereby people lose their functional capability to focus on things up close. And it has to do with a loss of elasticity of the lens that's inside the eye. And just how common is it? It's very common. Over 90 million Americans have or will have presbyopia within the next few years. And is it age-related? Yes, it's definitely age-related. Most patients have the early symptoms of presbyopia at about age 40. Everyone has the symptoms by about 51. So it's basically between 40 and 51 at one point or another, most people have it set in. That's correct. And how does one know if he or she is a candidate for the near vision CK? Um, generally, patients are over the age of 40. They don't wear glasses for distance, and they only need reading glasses, and they're tired of wearing them. That would bring them in the door, and then we would do a consultation and do some testing to see if they're candidates for the procedure. And how is this treatment different from, say, LASIK surgery? Well, LASIK surgery involves making a flap in the cornea, either with a laser or an incision of some type, and we lay the flap back, and then the laser does its work in the middle of the cornea, and then the cornea has to heal after that. This is a non-laser, non-surgical procedure, essentially, um, that uses radiofrequency energy to reshape the cornea. So it's minimally invasive. Additionally, LASIK surgery is primarily for patients who have problems with their distance vision. While we can offer options such as monovision, which is correcting one eye completely for distance and one eye a little less than completely for distance so that they would have better near vision, we can do that with LASIK surgery. There is a difference between doing monovision with LASIK and doing um, the CK procedure. With the CK procedure, we get more of a blended result. So the patients don't really lose much in the way of distance in that eye, but they gain a lot for near. How is this surgery performed? Well, the surgery is performed by placing topical anesthetic drops on the eye. We use a marking pen to mark the eye, and then we simply place the spots using the radio frequency energy in the mid-periphery of the cornea. By placing those, the probe in the mid-periphery of the cornea, it causes a small shrinkage of the collagen in those areas, and it acts somewhat like a belt loop, tightening the cornea out there and refocusing images for close vision. That's very interesting. Yeah. Is CK performed on both eyes, Dr. Griffiths, or on one eye? Well, that's an excellent question. In general, most patients require one eye to be done, and that's the non-dominant eye. However, we have some patients that come in and they're in their 50s and they think that their distance vision is just fine, but actually it's a little less than perfect because they're now farsighted and they were able to hide that when they were in their 30s. So those patients would have it in both eyes. For the dominant eye, we'd be treating farsightedness. In the non-dominant eye, we'd be treating the presbyopia. And for those of us who may not know what the term dominant eye means, mm -hmm. if you could please explain. Yeah, most people are surprised to know that they have a dominant eye. It's usually the eye you take a picture with in the camera. And we have various ways of testing for it in the office as well. And what type of results can be expected from this? Well, the re results are excellent. Um, patients can see the menu. They can see their watch. They can see things like price tags and ingredients. 
like they couldn't see before without a pair of readers. Now, if they want to read very tiny print or if they don't have adequate lighting, they may still require a small, much lower power reader for occasional use, but they won't be tethered to the readers like they were before. And how long has this near vision CK procedure been available? Well, it's been available for several years. It was first approved by the FDA for far-sighted treatments of small amounts about four years ago, but it was approved for presbyopia specifically about a year and a half ago. And how long does the treatment take? The treatment only takes about a minute or two. The patient is in and out of the room in under five minutes. Talk about a quick treatment, right? Absolutely, yeah. How many treatments are required? Generally, one treatment is required at a time. And what I mean by that is what we're treating is a progressive condition. Presbyopia does change. And that's why people have to bump up their readers to a higher power as they get older. So as that occurs and they get older, they may need additional surgery in future years. Can former laser vision correction patients who now need readers have CK? Yes, absolutely. They can, except for it's off-label because the FDA, when they investigated this procedure, were looking at virgin eyes. We have been doing quite a few of the former laser patients, off-label of course, and we've had to adjust the nomogram in terms of where exactly we place the spots. But these are very happy patients after they've had this surgery. Are there any side effects from this treatment? Um, very few. This is the, one of the safest refractive procedures approved by the FDA. Uh, what some people experience, especially in the first 24 hours, is a foreign body sensation. That's to mean that they feel like something's in their eye. We just tell them to rest the first 24 hours and that pretty much goes away. Halo and glare, as you can get with the laser procedure, you can also get with this procedure. It's very short-lived. It goes away within days to weeks. And is there any discomfort involved? Um, aside from just a little scratchiness, not much more than that. So I would think, based on what you just said, that there wouldn't be any downtime after this treatment. We ask patients to take it easy the day of the surgery, but most people are back to their normal activities the next day. In fact, some of my patients have gone out to dinner that night and were proudly reading the menu for the first time and very excited about it. They're able to see things they haven't seen before. That's right. Are the results permanent? Well, the surgery itself are, is permanent. But as one ages, their eyes will change. I liken the surgery to plastic surgery. You have a facelift, you're going to look great. But in a few years, you're going to continue aging as you go along, and you may need another nip tuck. It's the same with this procedure. We're treating a moving target. As opposed to the LASIK procedure, which corrects primarily for distance, that's permanent because we're, cre we're changing the shape of the eye. Um, and it's the shape that's the problem for distance vision. For this procedure, it's the function of the eye that's the problem. We certainly can't reverse the aging process. I wish no we matter. could. Yes, that's right. That's right. But at least we can correct things like this. Yes, we can. And are there any follow-up visits required? Sure. We see the patient approximately three days after the surgery, and then another two weeks past that, and then at three months. And then beyond that? For general eye care, which we recommend they continue having, yes. <laughs> Lastly, Dr. Griffiths, are there any important points that you feel uh, that all of us should be aware of when it comes to considering undergoing this particular treatment option? Sure. CK is an excellent procedure. It decreases the need for the readers that are constantly on your head or on a chain around your neck or in every room. And patients are tired of this. But it will not give you the eyes of a 15-year-old as well. It gives you vision for everyday life reading things like the menu and your watch and things like that. If you're reading for long periods of time, you may need a little help. So you need to have realistic expectations. Come in for a consultation. Be happy to educate the patients about it. Show them what the vision could look like. And then if they want to pursue it, it's, it's a good thing to do. That was very informative. Thank you, Dr. Griffiths, for being a guest today on A New Me. Thanks for having me. It was our pleasure.